Henry VIII is considered one of the most notorious English kings, with his six wives and many policies that resulted in the executions of thousands of people during his reign. In fact, it's believed that 70,000 people, which equates to about 3% of the population, were executed during his time as king. However, despite being one of the most famous kings in history, he should never really have been a monarch, and should only really have been a prince. Henry had an older brother, who was the one considered to have been the great hope for the Tudor dynasty, as he was the eldest son of Henry VII, and was the heir apparent. Arthur Tudor, the Prince of Wales, was a boy who should have been king. However, he died shockingly at a young age, and this caused great pain on Henry VII, but carved the way for the reign of Henry VIII. So join us today as we look at the shocking death of Arthur Tudor, the boy who should have been king. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Henry VII was considered by some to have been a fortunate monarch, defeating Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth Field in remarkable fashion. This ended the Wars of the Roses, and in an attempt to secure peace between the Houses of York and Lancaster, Henry married Elizabeth of York. Elizabeth quickly fell pregnant, and was sent to a priory to give birth. Henry VII had already chosen a name for his child, and had allegedly tracked his family tree back, and he decided his firstborn son should be named after King Arthur. Around the 19th of September 1486, Arthur, the first son of Elizabeth of York and King Henry, was born, and he was known for being a strong and able baby. He was seen as a symbol of great hope in England, uniting the two warring families, and he became the Duke of Cornwall, before he was then baptised at Winchester Cathedral. He was appointed very noble godparents, including Elizabeth Woodville, and he was raised in a nursery, before, at the age of three, becoming a Knight of the Bath. He was then invested as the Prince of Wales and the Earl of Chester. This was seen as a great thing, and there was much excitement for Arthur. The young boy was shrouded in titles and riches, and was taken for his investiture down the River Thames on the Royal Barge, to his huge ceremony, but then again this was a boy who it was hoped would one day become the King of England. He was educated to a very high standard, and he studied different subjects, and they noted that he was very intelligent and skilled. He took a keen interest in history, and was a skilled archer and dancer, who would impress at court one day. By 1490 he had his own household, and he was very close to his sister Margaret Tudor, and also his younger brother the future King Henry VIII. As Arthur Tudor, the Prince of Wales, died at a young age, it's believed that he in fact was a sickly child, but this was not the case. This was a mistake that came due to a letter written in 1502, however there are no accounts that the Prince, during his early life, was very sick. He was a tall child, and it was said he was very handsome too. He had small eyes and red hair, similar to his brother Henry, and he was a gentle and delicate child. In the summer of 1490, Arthur, despite being still very young, became the warden of all marches towards Scotland, basically being instilled as a protector of the border region. He then was also part of the Council of the Marches for Wales, and Arthur was involved in establishing his father's power there, despite still being a child. It was important that as a young heir to the throne, Arthur would find a wife and marry. A high-profile marriage for the boy with a princess from Europe would help England to solidify its alliances and place in European politics, and also helped to prevent any future conflict or war. It was planned that Arthur Tudor would marry the daughter of Isabella I of Castile and Ferdinand II of Aragon, to force an alliance between England and Spain. Catherine of Aragon and Arthur were planned to marry, and negotiations took place between the English and Spanish royal families. After a deal was struck, it was said that as soon as they reached age within the Catholic Church, the two would marry, and Catherine had a huge dowry, which today would have been well over £6 million. Permission was sought from the Pope, as Arthur was underage, and below the age of consent, and the two were betrothed in August 1497. Two years later they were married by proxy, and it was said that Arthur rejoiced the contract of marriage, because of his deep love for the princess, and they exchanged love letters, talking of their excitement. At 15, Arthur was considered old enough to marry, and Catherine came to England in early October 1501. The following month they met, and it was said that Arthur would have been a loving and true husband. 
on the 14th of November 1501. The official marriage ceremony took place at St Paul's Cathedral, with the Archbishop of Canterbury performing the ceremony. Following their wedding, their bed had been prepared and blessed by the Bishop of London, and the couple were then left alone. They then for a month lived at Tickenhill Manor in Worcestershire. They then left for the Welsh marches and established a household at Ludlow Castle. It was seen as a beautiful but incredibly strong fortress close to Wales and was seen as an administrative centre for the Government of Wales. It had a number of beautiful and spectacular buildings, however there was a big problem. Since the wedding Prince Arthur had been getting weaker and was coming down with sickness. Catherine stayed by his side and Arthur who was doing well governing was getting more ill. In March 1502 both Arthur and Catherine were hit with a disease or pestilence which was described as a malign vapour which proceeded from the air. In Ludlow, plague and disease had been lurking around the town, and Prince Arthur was struck with an illness. He and Catherine were banished to their beds, and kept inside their rooms, whilst they were attended on by the royal doctors. The servants said many prayers each day, that they would get better, but for Arthur these had no effect. Both Catherine and Arthur suffered from a sweating disease, that was a virus, that made the victims feel intense heat, and would make them feel as if their blood was boiling and they also became delirious. This often left them both soaked in sweat, but Catherine recovered. She said how, Arthur suffered from the most pitiful disease and sickness, that with so sore and with great violence, had battled and driven in the singular parts of him inward, that cruel and fervent enemy of nature, the deadly corruption, did utterly vanquish and overcome the pure and friendful blood, without all manner of physical help and remedy. Arthur Tudor never recovered, and he died from his illness at the age of 15, on the 2nd of April 1502. This devastated King Henry VII and his wife Elizabeth, and in the Chronicle of History of England it was said, for that noble Prince Arthur, the King's first begotten son, after that he had heard being juried to the Lady Catherine, departed out of this transitory life in his castle of Ludlow, and with a great funeral was buried in the Cathedral Church of Worcester. The young prince's body was embalmed and filled with spices, and he lay in state for days before his funeral. It was said of that day that the weather was so bad that the cart carrying the coffin got stuck in the mud a number of times, with oxen being used to free it. As the prince's body was lowered into the grave, holy water was thrown over it. The king ordered a grand tomb to be built in his son's memory. The great effect of the death of Prince Arthur Tudor is one that has been felt centuries on in England. Despite Arthur having a minor role in the Tudor period, the impact of his death changed the country forever. Without his early passing and shocking death, Henry VIII, his younger brother, would never have become king, and one of history's most brutal and infamous rulers would never have taken the throne. Everyone knows the king that Henry became, the king who executed even two of his own wives and his closest friends, and plunged England into religious turmoil as he needed to get a divorce in his own way, from the very woman who was Arthur's widow. He was never supposed to be king. Everything was planned for Arthur Tudor to become the next Tudor monarch after Henry VII, and for Catherine to become his queen. Catherine of Aragon would become the consort eventually, but to Henry VIII, her dead husband's brother. Instead of Prince Arthur, the man who should have been king, England got a bloody tyrant, who is remembered for his terrible personality and brutality. It's interesting to consider what sort of king Arthur would have been, as he was noted to have been a gentle young man. Despite his role in English history being insignificant, his death shook the foundations of English history forever. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.